Um, thank you, Lisa. I work as a data manager uh, for over 11 years now at, uh, at the Dutch Data Archive for scientific research data sets. Um, my presentation will be uh, a reflection on changing times and changing goals. Um, uh, as uh, we deal with more demand, uh, more requests, and larger volumes uh, of data, data sets. Um, so it's a changing role for me, but also likewise for the, for the data depositor, um, uh, who also needs to adapt to these changing times and changing, increasing demand. Um, I, I'm going to illustrate this with three case scenarios. I hope to be able to fit it in the time, at least. Um, because I also need to give some background setting on the organization first. Um, this is our office. Well, it, it looks like we have a massive office, but we are actually just one floor in the building. Um, uh, it's in, uh, in The Hague in the Netherlands. Uh, and um, we are uh, a data archive for research sciences um, with predecessors also coming from the humanities and social sciences, which are still the areas we are mostly specialized in. But in principle, anything is welcome in our data archive uh, of Dutch research data. We also sometimes accommodate uh, uh, data sets from, uh, from foreign countries. Um, we are the National Data Archive funded by the National Organization for, uh, for Scientific Research, uh, a part of the KNAW, the organization for, uh, which is a research organization, Umbrella uh, Institute. Um, and uh, as DANS, we have three main services. Uh, Easy, which is what I'm most concerned with, it's uh, the data archive. We have um, a research portal uh, with information on researchers and their output, and links to all kinds of, uh, of data publications, uh, including uh, everything from Easy. Uh, and that we host uh, the Dutch um, uh, Institution for Dataverse for sharing and storing uh, research data for the short term and midterm. Um, some additional services, training consultancy, uh, um, a research journal. We also provide data storage for bigger um, mass volumes, which sort of intertwines with, with the case I'm presenting here, uh, where we um, make use of the SORT protocol, it stands for Simple Web Service Offering in the Repository Deposit. I really want to make sure that that seems. Um, we do this for data for, for Mendeley data from the Elsevier uh, publisher. Um, uh, we, uh, we do the long-term uh, secure storage for those data sets. And you can find them via easy, but the dissemination is done by their own portals. Um, easy also hosts the archaeological uh, e-depot of the Netherlands. Um, which you can see a bit of an overview from here. Uh, we have over 40,000 data sets. Uh, many of them are publications, but also quite a lot of more kind of data, like uh, <coughs> data tables, images. Um, most of them are op some form of open access, and we're working on that. Um, I'm sorry to bore you maybe with this uh, picture. This is uh, something often used in, uh, in archiving. Um, it's the OAIS, Open Archive Information System Reference Model. Uh, why I'm showing you this is, uh, this is how archives um, uh, enable that we speak the same language about um, what are the important steps to, to take into account when you deal with archiving. Uh, what do you need to, to take into place between the data producer and the data co uh, consumer? Uh, it's not an IPA instruction kit on how to build an archive, but it's a reference model. It allows you to speak the same language. As a consequence, you can, um, we can certify uh, archives according to standards and do it uh, internationally. There are three standards for um, or certificates for data archives. Um, nobody has the ISO standard now. Uh, it's only been uh, shortly possible to obtain that in the first place because you need to be certified by a certified committee and that only exists for a year now, I think. Um, uh, DANS has these two uh, certifications um, for the easy archive and uh, that makes us a trusted digital repository and that uh, enables us to position ourselves as 
uh, a data archive that knows what it's doing and where the data should go to. Uh, this is. Uh, so I think you can use the microphone uh, or uh, speak a bit louder. I'm sorry. Uh, is this better? No. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, it is better. Okay. And so this is a picture of our easy archive. Um, uh, the primary interface, you can search for this, that uh, has advanced search and our systems. Uh, and you can deposit the data set. Um, if you find the data set, it might look like this. So you have a front page, metadata, and a files, and an explorer that allows it. How, does, how do the data sets get into easy? It's a self depositing that's the normal way to get that set into our archive. As a researcher, you go to Easy, you log in, and you describe the data set yourself. You upload the data set. The, the data files belong to it yourself. And then you send it to us, and then somebody like me goes through this list. We do a lot still manually. And I'm not going to go into all of that. I'm actually not going to go much into this at all, because this is what is changing more and more. Um, First case uh, I'm presenting is that um, that this manual uh, data processing, this data creation step, um, we are slowly or gradually moving away from that. Um, uh, the Netherlands are divided in twelve provinces, and every province has their own provincial depot, um, uh, which uh, deals with the archaeological uh, excavations uh, finds in that province. And um, the, those provincial depots, they came to us and said uh, that they actually want to control the data flow uh, themselves. Uh, they own all the, all the archaeological output from that province. And they want to do that in cooperation with us, that we still provide our secure storage and access. Um, <coughs> these are provinces, the provincial depots. Uh, so we set up a system, uh, we call it front office, back office model. Um, archaeological organizations, uh, researchers go to the provinces instead of to us, and the provinces send the data set to us uh, via that sort protocol that is also used by Mendeley and Guide um, to directly send the data sets into our archive. And that skips our curation process. Um, this means, of course, that uh, uh, the data sets already need to be curated beforehand. They already need to be in the best quality. Here you see it visualized with that uh, reference order for our archive. So actually, that is me there, and researchers normally go to me, and now there's a new font of this uh, from where the data sets go directly into our archival storage. And we welcome this as a change because we get more and more researchers. Uh, which produce and consume the data. Um, so we we also redirect people to the new front office and say, no, um, uh, this data set is actually uh, set up so that you can deposit it by the system of the promises, the public <coughs> uh, maintenance system. Um, and of course, to still ensure good quality data sets, we need to um, guide people to create fair <coughs> data sets, uh, find well, accessible info for reusable data sets. Um, for that, we have participated in projects such as, uh, um, of course, Ariadne and also the Partners project that, uh, 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 where we made this leap on how to verify your data. <coughs> and we, we have our own, um, uh, our own guys who have this on our, on our website, which deal with uh, things to ensure the data gets us as good as possible. And if it doesn't, then we really need to send these data sets back and ask for something better, because we cannot curate these things manually anymore. Um, manual data processing will still continue for the time being, uh, but um, but we, do, we are setting up the system so that the normal national workflow for our archaeological organizations will go by the provinces. Second uh, case I'm presenting deals with the uh, formats, the quality and usability of the file formats um, that we get. Um, many of you might already be familiar with the concept of preferred formats, preferred format policies. 
there was a setup to avoid situations like this, that you open a, a file and you can't open the file. Um, we have our own preferred format uh, guide. Uh, all other institutions have their own. Uh, the ADS has excellent guys who have practice on many kinds of file formats. Um, we have some different formats uh, described because uh, some other formats also do with social sciences, which we have a lot of, uh, even uh, life sciences, which we have a lot of data stuff as well. Um, uh, our guides uh, look at all kinds of, uh, of data form, uh, form types and uh, try to identify what are the best options looking at if the file is open, if it's often used, if it's uh, well supported by, by software, and uh, guide people to convert their files or already make their files in the best formats possible. Um, and we are updating this guide as, as I speak, actually. Uh, we hope to. Uh, uh, by the in a, in a couple of weeks, have every file, uh, every every format in our guide clickable for more information and more details. Um, uh, and, uh, and this is an example of, of archaeological data and the preferred formats we have for that. So scalable vector graphics, for vector images, uh, CSV data tables instead of Microsoft Access or Excel spreadsheets. Uh, that's, that's all good and well, but um, uh, but what do we do with, with outdated formats or formats in danger of getting outdated, which are already in our archive? And um, over the last years, we already had a couple of scenarios where we migrated formats in our archive on a large scale. So we looked at all the all the Word and Word Perfect files in our archive and migrated them to PDF. -A. Uh, we did the same with uh, Microsoft Access. Uh, that was uh, a big threat. And last year I, I saw at least two, and I think three uh, different, uh, widely different examples of a Microsoft Access database that people who had the current Access uh, couldn't open anymore, and Access 2003 was just able to. Um, so uh, yeah, you need, you need to get the data out of there. And we did that. Um, this is a very technical image uh, from uh, from the guy uh, from from Dan who did this for us. Uh, is always a technical archivist, uh, somebody who is in between the archiving staff and the programmers. Um, and uh, the, the files are, are searched in our archive, identified, uh, extracted with Python scripts, uh, checksums are, are generated and validated, and all steps. There's a double conversion done. Uh, so, so it can be checked twice if it, if, if it actually went well. And uh, provenance and metadata need to be added as well to the files to still be able to tell this file used to be this old file. And this is also some, something that, that will probably happen more and more as, uh, as time uh, goes on. The last case of changing, change, big changes uh, in, uh, yeah, the robotization of the data manager is um, to uh, to widen the dissemination. And this is of course where uh, the Ariana Plus type project have been comes into. Um, uh, that is uh, that people make use of our archive to um, to spread the data to a wider audience. And um, the Palm project is uh, is a good example of that. Uh, Palm project is. A project where, um, where metal de detectorists, uh, mostly amateur archaeologists uh, working with the metal detector in the field, um, register their finds in, uh, in a database, in the palm database. And, um, and that data is uh, also transferred to our archive for secure storage. Um, one of the main interests for, uh, of uh, the palm project to make use of us is that we are involved with uh, various projects that disseminate the data in, uh, in an uh, European scale. Uh, the Kaira project is another one that we, uh, we enable access to our ar archaeological content on the European portal. And this project also has a, has a follow-up now, European archaeology and stuff. And Ariane, of course, which also channels through all the uh, <coughs> 
<coughs> build channel through all those spawn uh, metal detector finds. Um, uh, we uh, started uh, getting all those spawn data in the last week, so we, we're getting thousands of them by now. Um, and they will all be accessible via the IAM uh, portal because of our participation in IAM This is uh, a, a final slide which, uh, which shows um, the different connections of our trusted repository in this uh, provincial system, uh, getting the data from the depot holders um, and national initiatives such as the Port for Antiquities of Humanities. I, I actually didn't even explain that one since Port for Antiquities of Humanities. Um, uh, that they deposit us and that we uh, um, uh, gather data to the Ariane and uh, Yorgana portals via OAI BMI, BMI harvesting while still also allowing for our archive to be searched and data to be downloaded from that. And that is uh, what, I was, uh, what I meant to uh, present to you, and I uh, hope that uh, uh, data depositors will be more aware of the kind of systematics and, and personnel that they are facing with, uh, that, and that uh, people are in data managers will. Uh, 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 will sympathize uh, and, uh, and reflect on the uh, composition in, this, in these changing times. Thank you. Thank you.